and I've got 1030 on the dot, so we'll go ahead and get started with uh, tour number seven today. Uh, we're going to go over firefighter gear, uh, the different things that firefighters wear to protect themselves inside of a fire, how they look different, how they might sound different, that sort of thing. I'm going to flip the camera around here so you guys can see what we're going to go over today. So here's firefighters' boots. We'll talk about those. And we have gloves that we wear. We'll give away the top secret here. Here's the coat. And you can see Firefighter Bingham is going to be the one to help us do this today. Over here is his radio. See that's carried in a leather strap. We'll look at that. Here's his air pack. Everyone, everyone always says it's oxygen. It's actually just compressed air. We wouldn't want to go into a fire with a tank full of oxygen. But we have his helmet. Looks like he's got some neat things on his helmet. I'll have him explain some of those things. And his air, his air mask with his name on so we know who he is when he's walking up to us. And that thing. I wonder what that is. Hmm. And I'll bet if we ask Zach to look at some of the things in his pockets, he might have some kind of neat things there too. So let's get this set up. We'll take a look here. If I get my tripod to work for you guys. And let's go over. So, as I said, this is firefighter Zach. He's going to help us out today by going over the fire gear and stuff. And obviously we're kind of hoping that most kindergartners through maybe third, fourth grade are kind of watching this and kind of paying attention to it. We want to go over that firefighters aren't scary. They're nothing to be afraid of. If you're ever hurt or need help, you can always go to a firefighter or a police officer for that help. So pretty easy to understand stuff, but obviously little kids sometimes kind of get scared when they see us in all of our gear and they don't know what it looks like and why we have it on and stuff. So let's take a look at his pants first. I'll go ahead and have him. He's in his normal uniform now, just a t-shirt and a normal pair of blue pants and his just station boots. He'll put on his fire boots. You'll notice they're slip-on. There's no laces on because he has to put them on sometimes in a hurry. So he gets them on pretty fast. Puts them on and all he does, pulls pants straight up. And he's ready to go. That's kind of neat, isn't it, guys? Doesn't have to lace his boots or anything. Pants are already there. See, he's got his suspenders and all that stuff. And this is kind of interesting material. It's not like blue jeans or anything. What's this made out of, Zach? You know? It's Kevlar or Nomex, isn't it? Kevlar or Nomex. Yeah, it's actually a flame resistant. This is called PBI, I believe. Uh, and it's flame resistant. If we were to hold a cigarette lighter to it or a flame, it would burn, but it wouldn't stay lit. It would actually put itself out. So it's a special type of material. The pants that Zach's wearing cost around 800 bucks. They're kind of expensive, and they're actually custom fit to Zach himself. So that they're, on the inside there's a little tag that says Zach, and you know they measured him and everything, and so he got the exact right pants for him. So he's got his suspenders. Those help him keep his pants where he needs to be. We don't want firefighters to have their pants. I'm going to kind of point down here to the bottom here. See how his pants don't go all the way down to the floor like your shoes do? Why is that? We don't want firefighters to have their pants dragging around. If we're out on scene somewhere, they would soak up oil, gas, things like that. If we're at a fire, they could soak up more water and more chemicals. We don't want them to do that. So firefighters' pants usually won't touch the ground. The boots kind of are, the goal is to have the boots the only thing touching the ground. What do you want to put on next, Zach? What comes next? Oh, that thing. I didn't know what that was laying on the ground. It's like a hood or a mask. What? Why on earth would, would we wear that, do you think? If you look, Zach only has a t-shirt on. So his neck's exposed and stuff. He puts on this hood, this is called a Nomex hood, and comes down the back, comes down the front, and we'll see why he wears that here in a few minutes, okay? Just covers the back, covers his head, and it's actually not just cloth. When you feel it, you can feel there's a membrane in there that prevents moisture from not coming in. What do you want to put on next? Oh, that's kind of, that's neat. That's a radio. You see firefighters with our portable radios on all the time. And Zach's is in a little leather holder here, if you look. So it's down at his side. And then it comes up. He's got his microphone up here. And he's going to put that inside of his coat. So that way, if he goes into a fire and gets too hot, the radio won't get too hot. It'll be inside of his coat and kind of protect that radio. A radio is very important for a firefighter. When we go into a fire, that's the way we talk to the outside. If we get lost or in trouble, that's how we're going to call for help. So you'll always see a firefighter with a radio, or at least you should, okay? What next? <clears throat> Coat. He's going to adjust that radio a little bit. 
put his coat on. Now the coat he's putting on, it's the same thing. It's made out of that PVI or Nomex material, depending on the type of uh, coat that he has. Um, and then it's the flame resistant coat. Coats are around $1,000, $1,200. So that's the thing I always kind of go over with kids. You guys know how expensive your coats and pants are and things. Would you ever go into a burning building with them? Of course not. Our coats are a lot more expensive and they're a lot thicker. They have a whole winter coat inside of them. We should have shown you that. I'll show you the liner here when we, a little bit later on. There's an outside shell and an inside shell, and that's how we, we stay safe in a fire. Look at his hands. His hands have these little wrists. Let's step up here a little bit. You guys see this here? See how his thumb goes through there? That's so that the inside of this, that liner, stays down. This only protects him from scratches and immediate heat and stuff. And inside here, it's like a winter coat. It's really thick, and that protects him from heat. What else is on here? There's a tag here. I'll be back up just a little bit. There's a tag here. This is for a flashlight, usually. Some guys have a flashlight they hang here. He's got his radio mic coming out, clipped on there. These are tags. Let me take one of these off. What are these tags for, do you guys think, huh? If I take a look at it here, it has his name, has who he is, has his number, picture of his face, these are called accountability tags. You'll notice Zach has two of them on his gear. So when we get to the scene of a fire, if we don't know who's on the truck, the tags tell us. So we leave one with the truck and then we take one with our, our officer and that's how we maintain crew accountability. So then the incident commander can come back, grab the tags off the trucks, and he knows exactly what people were on those trucks when they went in. Something kind of neat. You got some stuff in your pockets? Some little tools I carry. Let's see what you carry. That's weird. What's that? So this is a little spanner wrench that I use if I need to break down hose when we're cleaning up. Uh, it goes on the notches and helps us break the hose. I also carry a door chalk in case we're inside a building searching for somebody. This way the door doesn't close behind me and I know the way out. That's kind of neat. Right? Doors often close, don't they? So you can put that little wedge underneath there. And then up here. I carry. Oh, he's got some other cool stuff in his pocket. Firefighters pockets always have cool stuff in them. Some webbing and a carabiner in case I need to get out or I need to help somebody else get out. Can use it on car accidents to hold doors open, all that kind of stuff. Oh, so webbing probably comes in pretty handy, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah, you'll see webbing. You'll see a lot of firefighters carry webbing at different times, and that's why they carry it. They can use it for a bunch of different purposes. Do you have anything in your pants pockets? I uh, do not. You don't. Okay, so that's everything in the pockets. I'll have you turn around real quick. You'll see he's got reflective striping on him. Down here it says S85. That stands for Station 85. That's where we're from. And down here, on down, is his name. Why do we put the name way down here, do you guys think? Normally your name would be up here. Like you see football jerseys and stuff. wonder why that's down there. Well, see if you guys can type in the answer. See if you can, if you know already. If not, we'll come back. Next up, he's going to put on his air pack. Man, that, that looks pretty big and heavy. How heavy is that? Probably about 50 pounds. 50 pounds. Yeah, okay. That's his tank of compressed air. Remember, we said it's not oxygen. It's compressed air. So I'm going to adjust this camera up a little bit so we're not totally looking at the floor. Maybe. There we go. So he's got a couple different things on here. You see some fancy hoses and things, and we see another hose coming off. I'll have you turn around real quick, Zach, and we'll take a look. This is his air tank. And down here, you guys can't quite see, there's a pressure gauge. It tells us how much air is in the tank. Looks like a little speaker here. This is kind of interesting. We'll talk about that in a second. It says pack tracker. And over here it says pack tracker, too, and this is a big box. So, hmm. I'm going to show you this here. If you pull this off. There's a little valve here. Can you turn this way a little bit? Whoa, what was that? It made a little noise. Yep. Huh. Tell you what. Let's see what happens if I have Zach face the wall real quick and just stand still for a minute. Did you guys hear that little noise? I'll, we'll stand still and I'll let it go off again. So, we know what it is, but I want you guys to hear it. Because you'll hear this noise if you ever go, come around us during a fire and guys are wearing these air packs. You'll hear this noise every now and then. And when it goes off, just let it go, Zach. So as he stands still, you'll notice he's standing still. Hear that? And listen to it. It's going to get louder. Now, shake, Zach. 
As soon as he shakes, it stops going off. What on earth is that? That's our pass device. So if I was to be hurt or down and not moving, other firefighters would know that I'm in trouble and that they need to come help me. Great. So that's, kind of, that's a safety tool, isn't it? Yep. What if you needed to call for help right away? I would use my radio uh, and call a mayday. That way the chief would know. And after that, I would give him my information where I'm at, what's wrong, and what I need. And then I would activate this automatically. Go ahead. What that does is that's just a tool to help other firefighters locate where I'm at. Neat. On these packs, we actually bought new packs a few years ago. When Zach hits that button, our boss can be outside, the fire chief can be outside with a laptop, and this air pack number will pop up on the boss's computer that, hey, Zach just set off his alarm, he's in trouble or needs help. And here's Zach kind of moving. You'll see firefighters kind of doing a little shake all the time when we're out on scene standing around talking, and you'll see us move around, and that's what we're doing. We're keeping that motion sensor, if you will kind of timed out so that the, the pack doesn't alarm on us. So there's air coming up into here right now, because this is giving our pressure gauge. Zach has the same pressure gauge on the front that he would on the back. So he can't see the back one, obviously, but he can see the front. And then, what's this hose here? This is my regulator. So this is what actually hooks up to my mask, which we'll show you in a second. And that's how I breathe in the compressed air. I don't know if we can see. If you can see, there's two little green lights there. That's just a little bit of an indication of how much air is left in my bottle. So there's two green, it would go down to one green, then to yellow, flashing yellow, and red. And those are all indications of how much air I have left in my bottle. And I can see that by just looking at this right out my nose. So you don't even have to take your eyes off anything, you can look right out through your mask and see it. Yep. Neat. That's got a lot of stuff. See what, turn around for a second and we'll look here. Remember guys, we said why is the name on the bottom? Well, look, it's on the bottom because when he puts his air pack on, we can still see his name. Covers up station 85, but that's where we had to put that. But we can still see who he is on scene because obviously all the firefighters look the same when they're on scene, right? They all dress the same and stuff. So that way we can tell who we're talking to. That's why we have his name on his mask, too, when he walks up to you. So the tanks are interchangeable. They have a drag handle here. If Zach's in trouble, another firefighter can come up and grab this handle, and we can take Zach wherever we want with this, pretty much. There's also an emergency handle, if you weren't wearing a pack, right here. We showed you that a couple weeks ago. He can pull this out, and this will cinch up around him, and actually cinch around his body, and we can actually lift him with that and take care of him if we had to. What comes next? Um, we can just go over the helmet before I actually put the mask on. Okay. Here's his helmet. Oh, look at that. you got a door chalk up there, don't you? A little triangle, triangular piece of wood. Neat. Yep. So. What else? This is what my helmet looks like from the front. Um, on the left hand side here I have a flashlight, so that way uh, I don't have to carry a flashlight in my hand, I can look down and see what I need to see. Over here is something that I use during training. Um, it's actually a camera that records what we're doing inside. It gives us a little bit of feedback when we're done. Um, on the back here I carry another door chalk, in case I can't reach what's in my pocket. This one's just right off the back of my head, and I can uh, chalk a door. Also in our helmets we talked about, we have these built-in eye visors that come down. So if we're working on a car accident and we're using tools to cut somebody out, I can protect my eyes. That's kind of neat. I want to show them, this band looks kind of interesting. What is that reflective or something? Or? Uh, this is a M8 Foxfire uh, illuminous, illuminating band. So oh. in the, it glows in the dark pretty much. It's extra strength glow in the dark. We probably can't get it dark enough in here, but we can kind of see it's glowing a little bit. Yeah. In a totally dark environment, it would glow. The other thing I want to show you guys is this light here. So we all know that lights come out the front, and Zax is having some issues today. But you can see it there blinking. It'll come out green out of the back and white in the front. So whoever's behind them will end up being able to see where he's at when they're ahead of him. Okay? So what else? <clears throat> So this is my SCBA mask. We want to make sure when we go into a hot environment like a fire that our eyes are protected, our face and uh, lungs are protected. So this is what we use. And like I said, guys, remember I 
his name is right on the front of it. So when he walks up to me, he kind of looks like everyone else on the fire department. But we have his name on there so I can tell who I'm talking to. There's where that hood comes in. Look at that. So if he didn't put that hood on, see how all the skin here would be exposed to fire and heat? But when he puts that hood up, that's what that does. So that protects all that skin around his neck and his face, his head, that sort of thing. And you can see now, everything here is covered. There's no area of exposed skin. The only skin exposed is behind this plexi, uh, this Lexan and his hands, which will be covered here in just a moment. So, those hoods are also flame resistant. They're that PBI or that Kevlar or Nomex material, depending on which ones you have. There's his helmet. And now, here's his gloves. Let me see one of your gloves real quick. I want you guys to notice how thick these gloves are. So, kind of like winter gloves. They're really big, they're really thick. They're leather on parts. And that's what protects them. And you can kind of see, let me get up here a little bit closer, there's some plastic in there. There's actually a barrier in there. If your hands are inside and you stick this into water, the water won't come through because there's an internal membrane there to keep our hands dry. So our hands won't get wet when they're inside the gloves. So, take a look at that cuff again. We showed you guys that cuff that went around his thumb. So that pulls that down into there, and then his glove comes up, and his coat comes down over. And that way nothing's exposed. His wrists aren't exposed, his hands aren't exposed. He doesn't have any square inch of skin exposed to the outside world, except for you can see what's behind the, the glass, or the Lexan, the plastic. So that protects that there. So that's his regulator. What I want you guys to notice right now, does Zach look scary? He looks different than me. Look at him. I mean, he looks like he's taller than me now. Looks like he's bigger than me. He's not scary at all. Will you still help me if I, if I come to you in a fire? Yeah. Yeah. So he'll still help us. He just looks a little different. But this is what a firefighter looks like. I want you guys to listen to how he sounds. He's going to go on this air mask real quick. Whoa. Man, he sounds kind of like Darth Vader, doesn't he? Like that breathing. But you guys, if, you, if we're ever around you, and we have our mask on, you'll hear that. And it's just our breathing. That's all it is. Right now, he's not breathing any air from the room. Turn around real quick. All of his air is coming out of this tank. Now, I want to show you something. Remember we said there was a little valve there? Secret compartment. Remember I said firefighters always have cool pockets? We pull this open. Look at this. Wow, look at that. He's got a hose sticking out of the side. Okay, you can turn around. Why don't you look at that? That's kind of interesting. What do you guys think that is? That's in a part of our emergency system. That would allow Zach to come up to give air to somebody that was out of air, or it would allow someone that has air, if he's out of air, to get air. So he can plug another pack into there in an emergency, and you'll notice they're made great big, and they're real easy to feel, even a pair of gloved hands. We can do that totally in the dark. And we can give air to each other if we have to, if one of us is running a little low. There's also just a little clip here, little things on the FCBA to help us get tools and that sort of thing. Uh, what else do we want to go over with you? Went over this? I guess just how it sound when I talk to you. Yeah, go ahead and talk. So I sound kind of muffled when I'm talking right now, and that's something to remember if I'm looking for you in a fire. I'm going to sound different than I do normally. So when I'm looking for you, I'm going to be down on the ground, and you're going to hear me say, Fire department, is there anybody in here? Typically, I'm going to be stuck on a wall, so I know where I'm at. So if you are ever trapped inside of a fire, go sit by a wall. And it'll be pretty dark out. Can you crawl around a little bit? And we'll see Zach. See how he looks when he's crawling along the wall? Okay. So, firefighters have a lot of tools with us. We have a lot of clothing at our disposal. For the parents out there, all of our clothing has to be replaced every 10 years for safety reasons. We bought new gear here within the last couple years to make sure that all of the firefighters here at White House are nice and safe. 
bought, got ourselves some new helmets because ours were kind of expired and kind of looking bad. Um, when new people come on, they uh, get a new set of gear issued to them. We usually get them some rental gear for a while because it is pretty expensive to outfit a firefighter. And then once they've been on for a little while and get some certifications, then we go ahead and order them a set of, set of actual gear. I want to show you one neat thing about the pack itself. Go ahead and turn your pack off and bleed the air. Here, I got this one. So Zach's going to wear this whole pack during a fire. He's letting all the air out of it. What was that? That was like a, like a vibrating. Yep. That tells me that I'm at less than a, I think ours is 25% of the air. So that little, it sounded like it was buzzing or vibrating. Go ahead and shake. That's actually kind of like a cell phone ringer where it actually will sit there and shake his mask. It causes the whole mask to shake. So if he's not paying attention to those little lights, when it starts shaking, his whole mask will shake and he'll know and he'll feel that and he'll know that he's getting low on air. But he's going to wear this whole pack during the fire. He's not going to take the pack off, but it's out of air now. So what do we do? I have to turn around. These are really nice. All we do is we flip a little lever here. That loosens it up. We have two little pull lever levers here. I don't know how well I can do this with... I can't. Pull the whole tank off, and it's got that quick connect right there. So instead of having to mess with threads, we don't have to do that at a fire. We do that when we come back here and have to fill. But this quick connect, let me show you. So if this were a full bottle now, Zach would walk up, I'd slide the tank on, just like that. It's back in, it's got a full tank, and it's ready to go. So, pretty easy. Biggest thing I wanted to go over today was firefighters aren't scary. We're your friends. We can help you get out of a fire. Hopefully, you guys did the home fire drill a few weeks ago. Hopefully, you guys all have a safe meeting place. That's the goal. When we get to your, to your house, if it's ever on fire, if you ever call 911, we hope that you're at your safe meeting place already. And you can tell us how many people are in the house and how many people are outside the house. So, with that, I think that's about all we're going to do today. It was a quick, easy tour about 20 some minutes. I hope you guys enjoy them. I hope you're enjoying the series. We're going to keep going with this. This will be on YouTube later on today. We're going to try next week and the week after to get a couple different trucks in here. I'm working with some other departments to get some other departments. We're out of trucks. We've seen most of them. There's a couple we have them, but they're kind of little trucks. So with that, I think we'll sign off. We'll say Firefighter Zach and Firefighter Kelly are going to go. Um, thanks for attending and thanks for being here. Hope you guys enjoy. Bye.